another classic guitar video. Uh, tonight's guitar is kind of a semi-special. Um, to me, it's pretty uh, it's pretty special, but to uh, most people, it's just semi-special. But it is a limited edition uh, Ibanez um, Guitar Center S Series S570 DXQM. And that was specifically made for Guitar Center a few years back as a limited edition. They only made 570 of them because the model number is a S570. So they made 570 um, of them. And again, it's a limited edition Ibanez, um, or I'll start over because the name is long. It's an Ibanez limited edition Guitar Center S Series S. 570 DXQM. It's a mouthful, um, but that's what it is. Um, and it's a. Uh, let's just get right into this and show it to you. Whoa, my view is bigger. Isn't that cool? My view is bigger. <laughs> um, yeah, the, um, the wood is. I can do this without giving you guys a major flashback. I guess I can't because it's it's uh, too much glare. Um, but the wood is a jumbo quilted bird's eye maple. Jumbo bird's eye maple quilted maple. Um, let's try that again. Uh, jumbo bird's eye quilted maple. That's what it is. I'm, um, Kind of a neat take on quilted maple and bird's eye maple. It's pretty cool. It's got the um, tremolo on it. Uh, two humbuckers, a center single coil, um, tone, volume, and a five way switch. Um, custom inlays, rosewood fretboard, and it's ultra thin. You can see how thin this guitar line is. Um, very thin. You just see how thin it is. It's less than half an inch at the edge. You know, obviously in the center it's thicker. Um, and then on the back we have the nice maple um, multi-piece neck. Um, and the back wood is I believe ash or alder. I think it's alder actually. And then we have the kind of semi-open um, back cover that you can adjust the tension on the tremolo and you have access to um, making a, a few small adjustments um, to the tremolo back here and the screws and whatnot. Um, we are missing one screw here I'm going to try and find. I've actually had this guitar for quite a long time um, and I already worked on it once but I'm just kind of doing a, a quick refresh on this because I didn't have a case for it I just had it wrapped up in that um, great uh, custom case I showed you in my previous video um, which is a 55 gallon trash bag I put it in it and tie it up at the top <laughs> so that's my case for it but now I have a gig bag for it um, that I'm going to put in it um, when I'm done with this uh, tonight and I need to fix the um, bottom uh, strap button is the hole for the screw is kind of stripped um, so I need to fix that so it's tight this one's nice and tight but the other one isn't and uh, maybe do the fretboard we'll see and uh, we'll work on it from there so I'll just take off the trim line um, the chrome is black chrome that's why it looks the, the hardware looks a little darker um, so everything is black chrome if you will on this um, so it's pretty darn cool I'm checking the resolution on my stream because it's a little cattywampus to me for some reason I don't know why it's wider it's a wider view um, than I normally have as you guys can see I know you can't see my head or my face, but I would have to mount the camera way the hell back. And in doing so, that would make it so far back you wouldn't be able to see my work. So I'd rather you see the guitar. Um, anyway, um, even though I'm camera on camera a lot, um, 
<laughs> it's just one of those things where it's like, uh, um, <laughs> where it's like, um, I don't know. Um, it's kind of hard to get everything in one shot from a above view. Um, but I'm gonna hook up a second uh, camera to this uh, pretty soon, and uh, then we'll we'll have some better views for you guys. I'm gonna take this back plate off um, so I can have better access to the tremolo system, so I can loosen the strings because the tremolo system is floating. So when I go to undo tension on the strings and detune it, and um, when I go to retune it, the tremolo will not be level. It'll be either way like this or way like that. Um, so I need full access so I can block up the tremolo um, when I go to do the setup on it. Like I say, I've already done the full setup on this and polish and, and all my usual things I do for a full professional setup. Um, but it's been quite a long time Whoops! since I worked on this, maybe two years, something like that, thereabouts. Um, and plus it's been in that bag, that 55 gallon trash bag, as a case. Um, so, um, yeah. So I need to, uh, it's a little dusty and some of the black chrome hardware like the uh, um, uh, pickup bezels are a little slightly tarnished as you can see. I don't know if the camera can pick that up but just by running my finger across it I move some, remove some of the tarnishing so I need to repolish it and maybe repolish the frets and fretboard so we'll see. Yeah. Other than that we're doing pretty good. So I got the back cover off, and this is just your tension adjuster. Um, typically I adjust the tension in the middle, um, so there is that for that, so that's pretty cool. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this cover off too, and then take a quick picture of everything with all the covers off, just because, you know, guys know that's what I like to do. And we do have a missing screw here for whatever reason. And it was missing when I bought the guitar. So um, it's not like I um, lost the screw. So I'm going to have to see if I can find a black screw in my parts um, supply. Um, if not, I'll have to make a trip to King Bolt tomorrow. And take a sample with me and say duplicate mimic and King Bolt is a place that I go for all kinds of nuts bolts screws washers fasteners and they are literally king um, they have anything and everything that has ever been ever made ever um, the back plate is shielded as you can see that's pretty cool so I'm gonna take a quick picture of the back and uh, yeah Okay, I'll take another picture of the tremolo system. With the uh, back off. And yeah, okay. Oh, man, get my flashlight so I can see what the heck I'm doing up in here. Make sure all the electronics are copacetic. Ooh. We don't have any issues, which we do. Check the capacitor, make sure it's not broke. Make sure we don't have any um, grounded connections or frayed wires or undone soldering points, etc., etc., so on and so forth. And we don't. And uh, there's probably the first thing I need to fix is the um, bottom. Uh, bottom, uh, 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 u
shake it out and uh, do my toothpick trick. Yeah, come on now. It's not coming out very uh, easily. There we go. Ooh, the threads are all full of uh, wood. So I need to clean the threads out. I'll probably have to take it out in the shop and wire wheel the threads. See, the threads are all full of wood. Um, so I'll probably need to take that out there. We go home. Every seven years of our adult life, Come on, camera. Instinctual, it's too small to focus on me. You get the idea. The threads are filled with wood. So I need to fix that. <coughs> so I'll do that aspect of it. It's in perfect tune, and I hate to detune it, but it is what it is, and that's what it is. So. Is what it is, and that's what it is. I have to use my special tool. There are certain meditative techniques that will be fine if simply left alone. Please allow me to return to my quarters. It's not going to go i got two hours to finish this, so I think it'll be uh, good. I think we'll be okay. Uh. Ooh. and uh, clean the threads on that real quick here. I'll be right back. Do you see any problem with that, Tom? Uh, 
Well, as long as we go slow and easy, we'll be fine. Good. You're all set, Neela? I've got laser drills, sample cases, geospectral analysis. In other words, you're ready. Let's go. Okay, we took the uh, screw out into the shop and see if you can see a difference there. Threads are all nice and clean. So that's good, that's done. So that's pretty special. Okay, so now I need to detune it. And to do so, I need to unlock the locking tremolo. And, uh, and, um, er, uh, um, uh, er, uh, detune it. That's what we'll do. Take these uh, blocks off. Oops, I didn't want to do that, but I did it anyway. And we'll go ahead and well, now we can detune it. That way we can take the strings, uh, spread the strings away from the guitar so I can do the frets and fretboard. spread off away from the from the uh, frets and fretboard tighten the nut locking the nut for the uh, fretboard a little more Adjust the uh, pickup high. That way, I can use the pickup as a as a holder for the strings. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. As you can see, the strings are still hovering over the fretboard. So I I raise the pickup to its highest point, and then I go like that and see. Now the straw, all the strings are out of the way. Pretty neat little trick, huh? Take a picture of the fretboard and frets before. And, uh, Okay. I think we'll finish this tonight and not make it not not make it a two-parter. And if it is a two-parter, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But I'd only have about 
half hour, 45 minutes, an hour. I'm going to finish it again. But I think we'll finish tonight. now. Very minimal fretware on this guitar, which is good. I'd say less than less than 10% fretware, especially on the first 
six or eight fret. So that's pretty good. Pretty happy. neat guitar. I like these S series Ibanez's from 1990s and early 2000s. Um, they're pretty neat guitars. Um, they were originally called Sabre, but then they had to, uh, Ibanez got sued for using the Sabre name, and they had to uh, change it, so they just called it an S series. And uh, that was it. That was the end of that issue. <laughs> good headway and making good time here. I'm pretty happy about that. got these kind of squiggly line um, unique inlays it's kind of reminiscent of half of a guitar neck you can see like the head here and the neck here um, kind of cool and different you know pretty neat Almost. Almost. Oh, Whew. that is tough on my back. Tough, tough, tough. That's worth it. Take my picture, my after picture, if you will. Now you must attend to yourself. You are experiencing a condition known as Tunfar. What? Your emotional balance has been disrupted. You may not be in control of your more aggressive instincts. Whoa. Yeah, before and after is pretty good. Not bad. Why are you also? 
I'm making pretty good headway. I gotta sit down now because my back is killing me. Whew. Oh, she. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll start polishing up the body. Well, no, probably won't start polishing the body. So I gotta fix the, uh, I gotta fix the, um, oh no, it's okay, I'll take it back. I gotta fix the bottom of the, uh, hole for the bottom strap button, so that I have to do. it again. We're making pretty good time. Polish up these, uh, these black chrome uh, black chrome pickup bezels, if you will. of hardware on a guitar black chrome is. Um, I just love it, love it, love it, love it. It is awesome stuff. Love my black chrome. Whew, I'm tired. My back's hurting. This might be a two-part video. We'll see. I don't know yet. My back's hurting pretty good. <laughs> My back's hurting pretty darn good. My name is Chicote. I assure you we have no hostile intent. She does. Belana, please. She is suffering from a chemical imbalance, which is affecting her behavior. I'm sorry, I bumped you. Bumped you guys. However, she does need our assistance. We'd be glad to take her and leave your territory. Not before you tell me why you came here. We only came to find some galasite. We thought this planet was uninhabited. resolution right now it's 640 by 480 and usually at the end of a year or close to I reevaluate my settings because you know as the months and years go by people are able to afford and get higher uh, phone service device service and internet service um, and then I can bump my audio and video settings up you know higher accordingly um, so people can watch um, I might go to 720 by 640 as an experiment the first week of January and see how that works for, for everyone. And if that works for everyone, I might bump it up to 1040 um, by 720. Um, go full high def. 
at least on the video, um, and up the audio quality a couple more notches, and uh, that way you'll be able to see me, my face, and my whole workstation and guitar work. Because some people um, comment that they can't see me working on the guitar. Um, not that they don't believe that I'm working on the guitar, but just that, you know, they can't see everything. Um, you know, which is understandable. But the frets and fretboard came out uh, pretty, pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that aspect of it. I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy, pretty happy, pretty happy. So I need my little stick so I can get into all the little nooks and crannies here. Yeah. I just take this little stick and I kind of scoot it along. Not hard. You don't want to bear down pressure on it. You just want to you want to give it just a little bit of pressure, um, like uh, equivalent to finger pressure, um, so that way you can get into the little crevices and whatnot. Um, uh, yeah. You bear down too hard, you're gonna put little micro scratches and scratches into the uh, into the uh, guitar and hardware, and you don't want that. So you just take your little stick and you you, you kind of wedge the stick out. And you put an edge on it, and uh, you know that way you can you can do this kind of thing with it and get all your little creaks and crevices and, and whatnot, and that, that helps out a lot. And again, when you're doing this kind of stuff, you want to pick up your strings, otherwise you're, you're polishing with your strings, and you're doing damage to the surface of your work and damage to the strings, and you don't want that, so you pick them up as you're going along. Describing somebody's sexual stuff on Star Trek. <laughs> the Pond Far. <laughs> if you guys are familiar with Star Trek and Vulcans, the Pond Far. If not, Google it. <laughs> mm, pretty. Looks nice. Looks very good. I'm, I'm happy with it. Not that it looked bad before. It was just kind of dusty because I had it in that case. And the very tip top of the case, that uh, very tip top of that 55 gallon uh, trash bag was open. So the headstock got all you know, dusty and then dust got inside of it. And normally I use 60, 65, 70 gallon trash bags because they're bigger. Um, but sometimes it's just unavailable at the store. <laughs> so you have to use what's uh, what's available. You know? <laughs> that being said, uh, I think I can adjust this pickup back down now. Because I'm not using the... Uh, pick up as a retainer for the strings. And you want to go a little bit at a time because if you go too far then the pickup will bind and you won't be able to get it down to adjustment. So you just go a few turns at a time. And that's it. It works out pretty well. So she's a pretty, pretty, pretty guitar. I like this guitar quite a bit. This guitar is pretty darn awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome, Swiss. It's awesome. 
Whoa, it's about sex. Whoa. It's about sex. That's not good if it's about sex. <laughs> that was pretty racy for Star Trek to say such things. <laughs> you know? So yeah, these little sticks that I make are good for getting in the little crevices, like I said, and and uh, doing all that works out pretty well. Get all the little crevices, and I have a smaller stick. And this is just dowel stock, uh, but I have smaller sticks and bigger sticks, depending on if I have a really tiny crevice I need to get to, then I'll, I'll get out the smaller ones. So other than that, it works out really well. So yeah. So pretty neat guitar this is. I'm pretty happy the way this is turning out. No problems, issues, or glitches so far. Hopefully we'll finish it. It's 11.37 Pacific Standard Time. I should be able to finish by 1 or before. Um, so I am happy about that. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. And uh, we'll be right back forthwith. I'll do the top of the headstock. This is the strings or notes, and uh, I'll go from there. Here. You know what? I'll re-tighten the uh, jam nuts for the uh, tramp for the uh, 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 tuners, rather. Anyway, so I just had to just kind of test them and check them. Man, that's it. If they had been fully effective, you wouldn't have found anything interesting enough to bring you here. That's something we can help you with. What? We can show you how we detected the site, so you can disguise it better. We can also help you eliminate the last traces of the ruins on the surface, so no one else would be curious about them. You've seen the ruins? Yes. I assume the Sakari once lived there. Long ago, before I was born, what happened? My people never even knew who the invaders were or why they attacked. It was all over in less than an hour. Some of the colonists were fortunate enough to escape into the mines. We've lived here ever since, where it's safe. If the invaders 
can certainly understand your caution. But let us demonstrate our good faith by helping you protect yourselves. Okay, we'll let's go ahead and have a body again. We head stuck. Agreed. But you will be just polishing the main clips. And polishing the uh, headstock, top of the headstock, and the top of the tuners. And uh, getting past that aspect of this. And I'll move the strings. Moving the strings is a good thing, like I mentioned before. The further you can move them when you're doing this work, uh, the better. Respective, uh, respective, uh, Check the top. This is in places I need to places I need to do over again. I see one little spot I need to kind of do a little extra to here. extra right here because that's a place where you would rest this part of your hand right here so it needs a little extra attention if you will so I'll just kind of just kind of go over it a few more times a little better every time you do it. You know, just kind of, kind of one of those things. Oh, I need to sit down though because my back is killing me. Okay. 
camera view back where it was. Oh. Okay, now what? Um, we'll flip it over and we'll do the back. And, uh, yeah. Flip this sucker over. It's kind of hard to pick up because I don't have the uh, strap button on there. That's alright. Okay, we're doing pretty good up in here. Doozy, as my dad would used to say. That's a real doozy. And it is a doozy. You call Vincent? Is there a problem? Not at all. Sorry about that knocking noise. It's my much improved. Yes. You are lamp is hitting up against the uh, desk when I make movement on it. Special right there. Yeah. Been 54 minutes into this. We're doing pretty darn special. We're doing pretty good right now. It's a surface. Mercy. Where are we? I need to fix that lamp. It's making noise. It's making some noisy noise. That's noisy. I don't know, like it. I have a full spread of pictures of this guitar already when I worked on it the first time, but you know me, I kind of like to take pictures, fresh pictures after, after, you know, just, you know, just because I can, I guess. I'll probably do that tomorrow if it's uh, not raining and sunny out, which I do believe it will be tomorrow. Help her now, Mr. Harris. We 
if she does not resolve the Bonvar, she will die. Well, what's he supposed to do about it? He's supposed to, you know, do what what to her? I know this is a pretty bizarre situation. Probably not what either one of us had in mind. But it's too late to worry about that now. Tom. What? Be quiet. Oh. Oh. Next. <laughs> She's like, okay, be quiet. And, uh, in other words, in other words, grab me up. <laughs> Interesting, huh? show my favorite otter in this uh, commercial. I don't know why. Sometimes they cut them out, sometimes they don't. Okay, that's tight. Oh, now I can put this. Uh, cut it back on. You can't just set it up there, otherwise it'll slide off, so you got to put a screw in it to hold it in place first. And then just put one screw at a time. He's just supposed to shut up and let her do her th thing, I guess. Whoa. Whoa, they're getting jiggy with it on Star Trek. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Mercy. I'm gonna have to stand up so I can see my screw hexes. Oh my, my back is hurting, folks. I think I'll be able to finish tonight, though. I'm pretty, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'll be able to finish tonight. I'm pretty sure. Oh, and for some reason I am not, because my back hurts too much, because it's starting in. Um, then I will, I will finish tomorrow. In a part two. I think I'll be okay though. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I need to mount this sideways so I can access the uh, screw hole better. And I need to go get a toothpick and I will be right back. Oops, I have a toothpick. 
Now, what we do with this toothpick is we put it in the hole, break it off flush, and if it doesn't break off flush, then what we do is we get the wire cutters out and take off the required amount. And then adjust accordingly every time. Oops. And then I'm thinking one's not going to be enough because the hole is pretty darn big. So I'm going to break off a second one. So, looks like you're feeling better. Cut off another piece. Oops. Stick it in the hole. The refit is going well. We should have new warp coils by the end of the week. And now they're sticking out a little tiny bit, so I'm going to take my hammer and just kind of pound them flush. And I have a small little scrap left to use for another project in the future. Now I will take the screw and the button and remount it in the hole. I'm going to have to be a little careful. I want to screw straight, otherwise it's going to go and I'm going to start breaking stuff and scratching stuff and that won't be that won't be copacetic at all. I'll take a good grip on it. I might have to stand up and do this. There, there. There, I push down on it. Oh yeah, it's nice and tight now. Oh, might have to use the other size screwdriver. Yeah, that's better. And just go slow. Make sure to give Penny a pressure that way so you don't strip out the uh, Phillips head on the screw. Just go until it's tight. There you go. Now it's fixed. Good as new. <laughs> yeah. And that's how you fix a stripped out hole in a piece of wood. Some people might say, well, you got to fill the hole in and then re-drill it and put a new pilot hole in it and all that. No, no, no. You don't need to go through all that rigmarole. Uh, you really don't. You just do what I do with the, the toothpick trick. And uh, then you're golden. Toothpick trick. Toothpick trick works wonders. I'm going to polish the tops of the uh, volume and tone knob. You can't polish the sides because they're knurled. Or gnarled. Knurled. Knurled, technically. And there's no number markers on it. So I can put it in any position. Oh. You want to find the... I want to find the... Oh man, that's interesting. Maybe... Maybe this one over here. Yeah, sometimes the shaft fits a little better on a different one. There we go. You want to put it in the same... Uh, the same... Uh, splines. Because these are splined, so you want to put them in the same spline. Because if you don't, it'll loosen up on you at some point, and you don't want that. So, okay. Well, there we go. We got the uh, 
strap button fixed. That's pretty darn special. I will flip this sucker over. Um, do the back of the, we'll do the sides, and then we'll do the back of the neck, and back of the tuners, and back of the headstock. And then we'll start on the setup on this. stop polishing up to this point because the the shiny turns to satin finish up towards the higher part of the um, neck so you don't want to mess with the satin finish so, so you can just act accordingly on that. A little stick because I need to get in between the little crevices and stuff. This part was most dusty because it was most exposed out of the uh, bag case. So I need to act accordingly. This. This and again, this finish is called black chrome. It's pretty darn neat. It's one of my favorite finishes for for parts on anything, whether it's a car or a guitar or or anything really. It's my favorite. condition they're scratch free there's I mean they are whew, they are as new I mean they really really are I'm not exaggerating they are as new condition okay now we can flip this bad boy on its side and do the um, sides of the guitar See, this guitar is very thin. Very, very thin. I have a great deal to tell you. That's pretty cool. I'll pick it up, flip it over. Do you remember what happened? And we'll do the other side of it here. bad boy and it looks pretty darn good doesn't it if I do say so myself 
setup should not take long because I already have a, my setup on it. So it should, it should go back into place very quickly and easily. I hope, I think, I think, I hope. So I'll be right back. set up on this bad boy like I said the setup should go oops should go pretty quickly because there's already a setup on it so it should go back in place relatively easy with relative ease that being said preventing you from forming new long-term memories Long term, you can recall events that have been touched after four hours. Put the camera view back so it's a little more centered for you guys. <clears throat> and we'll uh, get started here. Boy, the frets and fretboard look really good. Pickup bezels look really refreshed. The tremolo looks refreshed. The tops of the pickups, just everything in general. Um, so you pick the string up. Put tension on it. You stop at about the fourth fret. And you make sure your winds are all under each other. And there's no saddle uh, grooves to worry about because this is a Floyd Rose type tremolo system. So you just check and make sure all your winds are going all under each other. And then do the next one. This one I have to push down because the leading edge is a little bit higher. Let me guess, I already gave you these specs. A week ago. But your upgrades are working nicely. Check my wines and. I mean, you do have to make sure it's in the top groove of the locking nut. But other than that, uh, you're pretty much golden on these tremolos. Maybe these daily briefings aren't such a good idea. It's just a waste of your time. Oh! Looks like I just broke a string. I just broke a string. Or did I break it? Or just did it just simply come out of the... Did it just simply come out of the, uh, it just simply came out of the, uh, block, the, two, the block of the, uh, tremolo. So I need to, I just need to put it back in the block here, see? Need to untighten the, uh, block. Oh, the block was loose. And then, uh, I'm gonna have to stand up and do this because so I can see a little better. You put it back in the block, make sure it's center, and you tighten it up. It wasn't tight, probably. I forgot to check all these. Oh yeah, they're all kind of semi-loose. See how you can turn them about a sixteenth of a turn? Yeah. That one's good. Okay. Okay, that's better. Now I can... Do this one again. Motion to some 
Oops, I got the strings wound up. Yeah. Darn it. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay. I'm gonna have to loosen this one and take it out because. <laughs> That's not copacetic at all. I'm gonna have to let this one out a little. Put it back in the block. Ah, come on now. You look like you can still be playing. That's what I said. Well, I am stronger later. So frank. Oh, come on. Sometimes the edge twists. And you can't get the uh you can't get the uh you can't get the edge back in it. So you need to use a pair of needle nose and Put the leading edge back down inside. The oh, hickey here. There, come on. Ah, come on. Yeah, come on now. Are you kidding me with this? Oh, there it goes. Okay, there we go. I think it'll be fine. not anywhere near in tune so now I need to check the tightness of the saddle screws for the intonation because I don't want those messing up on me so. so you just check them a little bit at a time you don't want to go because then you'll crack it like I did with that other uh, Jackson a while back And the great thing about this is this is an Ibanez tool. There's Ibanez right there. Or actually right there. So all the all the tooling fits in any Ibanez, modern Ibanez, or older Ibanez too for that matter. But Ooh. So you don't want to go too tight or you might strip out the screw. So you want to be real careful. You don't need it impacted down, you just need it tight. And there's a difference. There's a big difference between impacted down and tight. So. Adjust the pickup height back up a little bit. We'll do a final once we've uh, got it all tuned up. Screw for some reason has flat head screws. I don't know why. I think somebody changed them out for whatever reason. I think I don't know. This one's flat screw and this one's Phillips, so it's kind of kind of strange. But it is what it is. So. Suppose congratulations are in order, even if they are related. 
Okay. Okay. I'll go ahead and plug this puppy in. Oops, excuse me. And uh, get this done. We're at 12:16 uh, p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If I get done by one or earlier, then I'm styling. I always like the jack parts on these. They're really cool. They're kind of cross drilled. Um, they're really cool. Always like them. Always like them quite a bit. Too loose though. Oh, come on now. Okay, there we go. Now we're. There we go.
got a ways to go. Tremolo is perfect. I mean, perfect without putting a set of calipers on it. 
and measuring it out to the hundredth. Tremble is perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Put the blocks back in. The locking uh, nut blocks. I'm pretty happy about that. You always want to put them back in the same um, position because they've gotten the marks and grooves on the underneath of them in accordance to the string uh, gauge. So you want to do that if at all humanly possible. So you just tighten down a little bit at a time, just hand tight. And hand tight. And hand tight. And you want to check your tuning again. And it's going to raise it up. Now you want to crank down on it. Not hard, just kind of, you know, tight. And you'll feel, you'll feel when it's when it's got to its tight point and you can't go anymore. If you go past, you'll strip the you'll strip the threads out, and then you'll have to replace the entire locking nut. And you really don't want that. <laughs> you don't want that at all. I think I'm going to take new pictures of this tomorrow. Even though I already have a set, just, you know, just because it came out really nice. <sighs> we'll listen to that. That just rings out perfect. Now you have fine tuners down here that you can add, uh, you know, more fine tuning to. So we'll do that here in a second. As soon as I polish the tremolo arm a little bit. And you just kind of want to make sure your little jam nut isn't going to go cross threaded. You just go moderately tight and that's it. Now some people like them tight like this, and some people like them loose, where they kind of flip around like this. Um, I like them a little tighter than that, just a little bit, just so it's got a little bit of a resistance. You know, that's uh, that's the way I like them. fine-tuning. It is an absolute perfect tune.
Mm -hmm. I mean perfect. I couldn't ask for any better. Now I will straighten the tuners. Because I like my tuners all nice and straight. Just for aesthetics. And then people go, man, how'd you get all your tuners straight? <laughs> Unmute my show. Mm, one little spot I need to repolish right here. It's not bad. It's just kind of, just kind of there. So I'll do that real quick. She said she to become a Excuse me. How the hell did you know that? I'm happy the way the uh, fretboard, frets and fretboard came out. I'm really happy. <laughs> I mean, really happy. And we fixed the uh, strap button, so that's good. This way you came I'm really happy about that. Give me a check on it. You didn't tell him? After the settlement was established, it became clear that I was never going to find a treatment for the condition of the MP. That would return help. And consulted with some of the finest neurosurgeons and quantum theorists on Denobula. My colleagues believed there was no way to destroy these parasites. <sighs> I can polish on this, uh, pick up bezel a little bit more on this side. Wow, this guitar looks phenomenal. And if I wanted to, I don't want to sell this one because it's kind of special to me because it's, cause it's uh, a Guitar Center exclusive guitar and I used to work at Guitar Center back in the day. I kind of don't really want to sell it. I mean, if somebody wanted to give me $700 for it, I'd probably sell it. <laughs> uh, but the likelihood of that happening is uh, nil. Because it's not worth $700. It's worth about mm, five, five fifty. Yeah, it's worth about five, five fifty fair market value. But I will say, if somebody wanted to give me seven hundred dollars for it, I'd sell. Because in actuality, these are pretty rare. You don't see them come available for sale too often. Uh, in fact, right now I checked today. There's none on Craigslist. There's none on eBay. There's none on Reverb. And I kept checked a couple other places too. There's there's none available. So so there is that. One little spot I need to get right here with my little tool. And see this little cap right here? You can unscrew that and move the tremolo over here and swap all the strings and make this a left-handed guitar very easily. Um, that's what this little this little cap is. It just all it does is cap the whole. Um, so you can make this a lefty very easily. Because they did not, because this is a limited edition guitar, they did not make it in a left handed version. They only made it in a right handed version.
turn the TV down low and turn your hearing up high for a listening level ideal for everyone. So let's review. Attack amplifier can give you a tactical advantage in the field, help you hear better in a noisy room, and even let you enjoy TV at the right volume for everyone. I mean, there's just nothing like it on the market today. Act now to get your TAC amplifier for the special introductory price of just $19.99. And we'll even ship it to you free. Plus, it comes with our lifetime guarantee. But wait, order today and you can get a second TAC amplifier. Just pay a separate fee. That's one for you and one to give to someone else who could use a tactical advantage. You get two TAC amplifiers for one special low price. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-218-7310 or go to buytacam.com. This offer is not available in stores, so call 1-800-218-7310. That's 1-800-218-7310 or order online at buytacam.com. Call now. It's good to see you, sir. Captain Tucker. I don't think you need to call me sir anymore. Old habits. I apologize for the low lighting. Running on reserve power. Antimatter's at a premium these days. How long has it been since you took command? Nine years. I've, uh, got some people who'd like to say hello. Thank you. Commander, is it? Uh, actually, I've just been promoted to captain. Malcolm's taking over the Intrepid from Ramirez. Did everyone get their own ship while I was gone? Not everyone, sir. Oh, she. There's a reception in the mess hall. If you're feeling up to it. A visit to engineering. Maybe an order first. left the reception early. It was a little disturbing. From my perspective, I saw most of those people just a few hours ago. It couldn't have been easy for you, telling me the same story over and over again for 12 years. I don't always tell it in detail. I've told you this before, but I'm very grateful for everything you've done for me. If this works, lots to Captain Archer. Go ahead. We're ready. Uh, I can't believe it's a missing terrain. Sorry I was gone so long. I had to shut off the some of my Christmas ornaments outside. So they're not on timers, so I have to unplug them. 
uh, manually. <laughs> so that's what I was doing. Okay. Back to the work. And I have to leave again for a bathroom break. All right. years in that house learning so much about him yet he remembers nothing about you beyond the day he became ill if we are successful perhaps then things will be different there's a discrepancy in the scans <sighs> Okay, sorry again, everyone. I had to. Uh, <clears throat> had to get my uh, coffee maker ready for tomorrow. I have one of those uh, Keurig, um, like it's the top of the line Keurig machine, so I get it ready and prepped for the morning. So all I have to do is press a button, and then I have a regular coffee maker um, for everyone else in the house that doesn't happen to like the Keurig. So I put the water in it and the filter and the coffee and uh, get it ready for the morning. <sighs> so anyway, I had to do that. So we are almost done with this guitar. Boy, we've uh, been going for three streams tonight and about four, four and a half hours. And we're done with this guitar. This guitar is done. Uh, the tremolo is 100% perfectly level. It's in perfect intonation. Perfect tune. See, even unplugged, you can hear the hear the ring in it. It's just absolutely awesome. This is a this is a great guitar. I mean, it really, really is. So yeah, this is a really great guitar. Um, I'll take some fresh pictures of it tomorrow and upload them on my Twitter and Facebook tomorrow for you guys to ogle over. <laughs> and I'll close this uh, stream out in about 14 minutes and we'll be done because I am really dog dog tired. I had a really bad night with my back last night. I mean really bad. <sighs> I didn't get to s get to bed until 4.30. And then I was awake until 5.30, and then, of course, I got up at 10, which is late for me. Um, and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then I had a full day today um, of work. So, and then I, tomorrow's, tomorrow's more of the same. Uh, tomorrow I will try and finish that Frister Speedstar. 
Pinky Tuscadero guitar. I gotta eat. I gotta not remind me. I gotta email uh, my friend tonight and ask him if my suggestion is uh, copacetic for him. I'm sure it probably will be. And then uh, if he gives the go ahead on my suggestion, uh, then I will finish the guitar once and for all tomorrow night. Um, hopefully finish that within about an hour. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, action on this is nice and super low. I mean, it's really low. I love it. Beautiful guitar. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful guitar. Beautiful. Again, this is the um, the Ibanez Limited Edition Guitar Center S Series S570 DXQM. <laughs> yeah, it's a mouthful, um, but that's what it is. Um, guitar Center. These were specifically made for Guitar Center only. They made 570 of them. <sighs> And that's it. And I have one. Um, I'd like to find another one. Um, I don't know. Just for the sake of having two, I guess. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm 99% sure they made them all in this blue. This uh, translucent, translucent blue burst. Um, I'm pretty sure. And the uh, it's pretty pretty cool guitar. I uh, love it. So I'm happy with it. And I'm not going to put it back in its uh, 65-gallon trash bag. I have a gig bag for it now. Um, an Ibanez gig bag for it. So I'm going to put that in it after I take pictures of it tomorrow. And uh, I'm ecstatic about this guitar. I'm just ecstatic. I couldn't be happier. Uh, it's a really cool piece. I, I love it. Really neat. Really cool. Really neat. Um, yeah. <laughs> my rags here. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy. Um, like I said, tomorrow I will finish that Frister Speedstar, a.k.a. Pinky Tuscadero, tomorrow. I'm hoping to finish that in about an hour, uh, two hours on the outside, and then if I do, I will bust out a, another guitar to work on tomorrow. Um, I don't know what it'll be, um, but something cool, as per usual. And, uh, yeah, boy, the frets and fretboard on this are just absolutely shocking, shockingly beautiful. Um, I went over it twice, so I mean, the action is really fast on the frets and fretboard. Um, they used quality um, jumbo 24 fret. Um, oh, wait a minute. 12, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23. Yeah, 24 fret. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to count because the fret markers are, are, the inlays are different on it, so it's kind of throwing me off a little bit, but it's 24 fret, jumbo stainless steel frets, um, rosewood fretboard, um, jumbo triple uh, A bird's eye quilted maple top, and alder back, um, maple neck, uh, black chrome hardware, uh, Ibanez Edge 2 Custom Tremolo um, One volume, one tone Five way switch um, Just an awesome guitar uh, These are really really cool I love them I can't rave about them enough I have I actually have quite a few of the S series um, Ibanez's um, From the first year they came out um, Up until I think my newest one is a 2000, 
14, I want to say. But I love these S series because of their kind of semi arch top, curved top and back. And they're very thin and streamlined. And they're fairly light. Um, and the setups on these are very easy to do. Um, you know, you have this open back um, cover to expose the tremolo so you can. <laughs> So you can, um, you know, do work on the tremolo without taking the cover off for the most part. And then you have the adjustable tension wheel here um, for the uh, tremolo. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just they're phenomenal. I see one little spot I need to clean over again. You always find something. Um, when you look at your guitar for a second time, you go, ooh, there's a little spot I missed. It's not bad, it's just kind of... There we go. Yeah, see, that's all I have to do. That's it. Oh, wait a minute, I see another spot. There we go, and that's done. <laughs> Sometimes you always see a secondary little spot you can go over again. <laughs> Other thing. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's a cool guitar, cool piece. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. Um, I did buy it used. I didn't buy it new, um, but I bought it from somebody who took pretty good care of it. Um, yeah. So other than that, there's the back of it, and we'll flip it back over again. And uh, I have a full spread of pictures of this already, but I will take more tomorrow, um, just because that's what I like to do. And we'll have some good fresh pictures of it tomorrow. It's in perfect tune, perfect intonation. Perfect action height. I mean, it is just above buzz point. It is super low, super fast action. And, uh... And, um... Yeah. I can't ask for anything more. I really love the fact that they put black chrome hardware on this. Um, black chrome tuners, black chrome locking nut, black chrome pickup bezels, black chrome tremolo and tremolo arm, black chrome knobs, and black chrome uh, strap buttons. Um, really cool. I love black chrome. There's always been something about black chrome um, that I have always loved. Um, just excuse me um, just really cool I love black chrome what can I say <laughs> um, so yeah really cool guitar and I've been thinking about this guitar for about three weeks and I kept saying well I'm gonna bust it out I'm gonna bust it out and, and uh, check it out and make sure everything works and you know if it needs a polish or whatever because I kept it in that 65 gallon um, trash bag as a case just to keep the dust off of it, but the top part of it was kind of, you know, the top of the bag didn't reach all the way to the top of the guitar, so it was exposed and left a little hole, so it got a little bit dusty. Uh, but now I have an Ibanez gig bag for it, which I'm going to put it in tomorrow after I take fresh pictures of it. And, um... Yeah, I just love this guitar. I love this guitar, and it is absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing that doesn't work. Um, there's nothing stripped out. There's no dings. There's no dents. Um, the condition of it on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say, is a, um, a 9 and a half. I really would. Um, it has a few little strum, pick strum marks micro scratching of, of strum pick marks here from about here to about here um, right here 
and I've polished them down pretty good. But they're, you can, if you really look hard at it, you can see them. But they're really light. Um, for not those, this guitar would be a perfect ten, condition-wise. I mean, it's just, it's stunning. Um, you guys can see it. It's, it's clearly a stunning piece. <coughs> And uh, we'll close this video out in a few minutes, and uh, we'll continue tomorrow with uh, the Frister Speedstar Pinky Tuscadero guitar, and hopefully finish that sucker tomorrow. I'm really wanting to finish that guitar tomorrow. I mean, really wanting to finish it. I mean, really wanting to finish it. Um, it's been a long time coming. Uh, for that guitar, so I really want to finish it. Really, 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 really want to finish it. Um, yeah, <laughs> really want to finish it, get it done, and back to my friend um, for Christmas. And uh, he'll come pick it up maybe by the weekend, and uh, all goes well tomorrow on that. And uh, we'll go on to the next guitar tomorrow. So yeah. Anything else? No, that's great. You know, you would make a wonderful nurse. So other than that, uh, we're doing pretty good on this guitar. Really happy with the way it came out. Uh, so I guess we'll close this video out now. I'm pretty tired. So thank you for viewing this uh, classic guitar video on this um, this uh, Ibanez limited edition Guitar Center S Series S five seventy DXQM. That's a mouthful. Um, but that's what it is. And they made 570 of these uh, exclusively for Guitar Center by Ibanez, and they distributed them throughout the entire United States. And I have one, um, and I'm looking for another one, and maybe even a second or a third and fourth one. Um, uh, I really like these guitars. Um, they hold two things for me. One, I used to work for Guitar Center back in the early 90s for a few years. Um, so it has that kind of emotional attachment to, for me for that aspect. And uh, and they're just really cool, nice guitars. Um, so that's why I like them. <laughs> Thank you for viewing this guitar, classic guitar video, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.